Hey, this is Pete again, and we're going to go back to our source grayscale, and this time we're going to make a sepia tone. You can follow along in the book in digital color correction by turning to page 146 and 147, and we're going to go step by step um, and just follow that book exactly and make ourselves a really good sepia tone by um, translating our channel information from one single grayscale channel to four C uh, channels in CMYK and then using Photoshop's channel mixer to do some very clever things. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all, Command A, and copy that information, Command C. Uh, that duplicates all of this information onto, uh, uh, onto the pasteboard in Photoshop uh, and will allow us to come back and uh, paste it later on. So what we do now is we go to image mode and we flip our file from uh, grayscale to CMYK color and we see what happens with our channels palette right here. We get cyan, magenta, yellow, black channels. Now what I'm going to do here is immediately go to the yellow channel only by selecting on yellow and um, and then I'm going to command V to edit paste that grayscale information just into the yellow channel. You can see that the other three, the cyan, magenta, and black are inactive. But once I've done that paste move, I'm going to come back here and then select the CMYK uh, image. And you can see that the picture has taken on just a slight yellowish look because the yellow now is dominating like it's going to have to dominate in the, um, in the sepia tone. Now we are going to make a sepia tone with no cyan at all in it, just magenta, yellow, black, uh, which is going to give us a very attractive sepia tone, and more importantly, it's going to make it very easy to print on a, on a press. It's going to make it very easy on the press operator because we'll be doing this special color with three inks instead of four, and three inks is always easier to print than four. So I'll deselect now. Command D to get rid of my marquee. I don't need that anymore. And here's where we go into the channel mixer. Image Adjustments Channel Mixer. Okay, gives us this menu. Let's take a look at the menu and see what it means. Um, for now, let's ignore the preset and let's look at the fact that it has an output channel and it has a selection of source channels. Uh, the way to look at this is the output channel, which is any of the existing channels in the file, depending on which one you select. The output channel is the channel that you wish to change. The source channels are how you go about making that change using what's in the image. So we're going to start with cyan. And we said before that we want all of the cyan to go away. So I'm going to take all of the cyan out of the cyan by zeroing out my source cyan as it impacts the output channel cyan. And if I can't get this thing to read zero, I'll just type it in. So now we've taken all the cyan out of the cyan. If you come down here and you look at the little... Uh, icon or thumbnail for the cyan channel, you see that it's turned into a blank white rectangle. It's gone. Okay, now we come to the magenta, and you can also see the, that the impact of taking that cyan out of the image has definitely skewed this picture to a kind of a pinkish brown. Next channel, magenta. Uh, what we're going to do here with the magenta is reduce the, the uh, magenta, and I've found through a whole lot of messing around that 62 happens to be a really happy number toward making uh, what's going to end up being our sepia tone. And you can see that it, our picture is continuing to move in the direction of getting that, that historic archival uh, 19th century look. Okay, that completes our adjustment of the magenta output channel. We now pick the yellow channel. And in this one, um, we don't need all of the grayscale image data, but we do need more than the 
data than the magenta because again yellow needs to dominate magenta to make a good brown and I'm going to change that to 70. So that was step 8 in the uh, steps. And now we go to step 9. We finished our yellow adjustment. We choose black as the output channel. We move our magenta slider up a little bit. We're actually copying some magenta information from the magenta channel into the black. I'm shooting for a 15, so I'll put that in exactly. I'll take the yellow and bring that up to 25. And then what we'll do is re we'll reduce the black original information in the black image down to 75 or so. Just like the book says on step 9. Uh, if we preview this now, you can see that's where we started as a four color neutral with cyan information intact. This is our finished sepia tone. Now it is a CMYK image even though there's no cyan in it. it it's, this is the color space. It's CMYK. So when we go to save as, we're going to save it as a TIFF. Again, we don't need it to be an EPS because there is no custom Pantone color in here. Um, and we'll sepia teen. Let's call this a sepia tone instead. We're not going to change any of those. We're done. There's our sepia tone.